Welcome once again to the Complete Free Flutter course, presented by the same person as always, myself, Ovidius. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to start building out that remote data source, and we're going to talk a tiny bit about RESTful APIs in order to do that. So with RESTful APIs, to get the data, what we have to do is send a request, usually a GET request, to a, a certain URL with different endpoints depending on what exactly we want to get from it. The URL we're going to use in this case is this one, uh, HTTP, and I'm not going to read it to you. Notice over here, API key equals your key. So let's go ahead and get the key. What we're going to do is go to API key over here, and we can select the free version, or if you're feeling generous, gener uh, donate to this guy's Patreon. And if you do that, buy me a coffee as well. There's a link in the description below. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can select the free version, enter your email address. Uh, I can't spell Gmail. Enter your name. And I don't think it has to be real, but it should be. And a use case could be something like uh, learning to code, Flutter, blah, 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 blah and something like that. Uh, just tell him why you're using this and then hit that submit button. Uh, after you do this, you're going to get an email containing your API key. And once you have that, uh, right click on lib, new file, and I'm not going to do this, and uh, create a new file called API key.dart. And in your API key, what you're going to do, and I'm not in the correct folder, I'm just showing you an example. What you're going to do is write const string API key equals and then paste your API key like this. And then once you have that, save your file. And I'm going to delete this because your API key is uh, is private, it's personal information. Uh, notice that there is a 1000 daily limits use. So if I make my API key public, although I'm not paying for it, he doesn't have my credit card details, so he can't charge me for it. Um, if everybody uses my API key, we're gonna go over the daily limits and it's gonna stop working. So rather than doing that, guys, just, just make your own. Uh, but once you have your API key, one thing that's really good to do is add this to your Git ignore. Um, now, personally, when it comes to Git, I like to use the terminal commands. Some people like Git desktop, I do not. So to add something to, uh, to add something to Git ignore, what we're gonna do is write echo, and then these two caret symbols, whatever you call them, no, no, echo and then the name, the path in this case is going to be lib slash API key dot dot. So that's the path to your file. And then the two carrots dot get ignore. Hit enter. And you should not get any output. That means it's worked correctly. Uh, once you have that, I can actually open up my git ignore. And this is Git ignore basically contains files which will not be uploaded to GitHub, especially if you're like myself, you have a public GitHub, um, like most of you are probably trying to build out your portfolio. So you really should be uploading stuff to your GitHub just so potential employers can see what you're working on. Uh, even if you're not applying for jobs now, it's good to start building that up. So potential employers can see that you have been coding for a long time and that you have been uploading things for a long time. But yes, now that I uh, added that line, you can see it right here. I'm not sure why it showed up here. It should have showed up on a new line, but uh, yeah, that's fine. So now you can see this was added here. So now when I upload to my GitHub, my API key is going to be ignored. That is not going to be uploaded. So that's gonna stay private. Cool, so that is all done. And now that we have this, let's go to our remote data interface. And sorry, I was just practicing before. So now we're gonna to go to our remote data interface. 
and uh, we could make a new file. We probably should make a new, in fact, we will make a new file. Uh, and I'm going to call this remote data source dot dot IMPM as always. Um, in fact, I don't think I need it. I will need it. I will need it later. And now I'm going to put this to the side so I can see my old uh, stuff. And I'm going to say class remote data source implements remote data interface. Now, if you guys don't remember what this implements keyword means, it's similar to extends, but rather than me just taking the code and using it, implements forces me to override the methods. It forces me to actually write a real implementation. And that is the same reason why I'm getting an error here, because I don't have these two functions which my remote data interface has, I haven't written them out yet. And therefore, I am getting an error um, because I need to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a list search results, search movie. Uh, and actually, I was thinking about this. I decided I don't want to make this a list set results. That's why you saw when we started, I had this open um, because I want my search results to look exactly like what the response looks like. I want my search results to contain information about whether or not I found the uh, whether or not I found the, the thing I'm searching for, how many requests I have and what page I have. So this I'm going to copy into a new file and I'm going to call this movie summary dot dot. I'm going to say class movie summary. And in fact, I will just paste it. And I am not using the F2 key. You could have also used F2 to rename. The reason I'm not doing that is because that would then go ahead and rename it in places like this, but that's not the behavior I want. Okay, so I want movie summary to be separate, but then I want my search result to contain whatever I searched for, and then uh, final int page, uh, final int total results, final ball. Uh, found so if the response was found or not and then we'll have to update these as well this the page total results found and of course the most important one final list movie summary uh, items results, anything like this. I'm just going to call it items. I don't like that. Uh, movie summaries like that. Because I do want to be a bit more explicit in what we're doing. Okay. And now that I have this, I'm going to change the return type from list search results to just search results. And of course, the search result now is different than the search results we had before. Um, so that's fine. Just going to close this. I'm going to close the sidebar. This is no longer a list search results. It's just a search results. Import that. Fix imports. Cool. Um, I'm wondering if I'm forgetting anything. One thing I could do is say int page equals one. So this is going to say, if we don't provide a page, assume it to be page one. But then this is not going to like that. No, this is fine. Okay. So now that we have this, we're going to actually call uh, this URL. this URL. And what we're going to do is 
save the URL first. Uh, final, I feel like I'm forgetting something. First, we're going to save the URL final, not final, const string base URL equals with that URL there. Of course, this needs to be replaced with API key, which I'm importing from that file. And you should have uh, something similar. Okay. So this is our base URL. And then what we're going to do is say final response equals await, which means that this needs to be async. And we're going to await. We need to use the HTTP. HTTP package to actually get this URL, which we don't have yet. So I'm going to go to pubspec.yaml, add update dependencies HTTP, like that. So now we can see HTTP has been added, and this is just running, uh, getting me my package. And I'm going to have to reload my window to actually have that go through. To actually get those URLs, we need to use the HTTP package, which we've just added to pubspec.yaml. So now I'm going to import that. Import package HTTP HTTP.dot and oftentimes. I don't know why everybody does this, but we tend to uh, import it as HTTP. So whenever we want to use something from HTTP, we have to say HTTP.client. I'm going to call this client, and I'm going to create the constructor for the final fields. So when we want to use our remote data source, we're going to need to pass in this client, and we'll do that later on. So now that we have this, I can say client. Um, dot get and what gets going to do is just get information from a specific um, from a specific URL and the URL I want is going to be I'm gonna make a function for that string build URL search URL and this is going to take uh, string title end page and I'm gonna have a string return string equals base URL and this base URL is getting this base URL okay and now if we look at the parameters, these are the different things we can search, right? And to use a, uh, a REST API, we need to change the endpoint of the URL after this end with the different parameters we can search. So to use this S, we need to say and S equals whatever we're searching for. If we want more than one parameter, we can chain it. We can then have a second and uh, page equals whatever. And you would know this from reading the documentation. Every different API has different parameters. So it's not like you can use search type page for all of the different APIs because it might not make sense for the different APIs. Uh, and I cannot tell you what parameters you need to use for those specific APIs because well, they're all different. Okay, so now we can say return string plus equals. So we have the base URL. And now we're going to say, um, did I end with end? I did. S equals, and we're going to put title here. And now I'm going to say, if page not equals one, then return string plus equals 
um, and page equals page like that. And now I can just return the return string. Right. So here I can pass in build search URL with the title, which is coming from here, and the page, which is coming from here. So let me give you guys an example of what this is going to look like. So that's going to be the, I'll just write it here, that's going to be the base URL, which is this, with API key equals Ovis key, which is my one. And then we're going to get here and S equals Star Wars, for example. And then if the page is not one, then we're going to say and page equals two or equals three. And this is the URL we're going to end up building out to actually, um, yeah, to actually get that. And doing this get response is the same as actually going to that URL, OMDPIB something like this right so this is the result we're going to get okay and then we can say if response dot status code not equals to 200 so what are we doing here okay and there are different response codes which mean different things so for example i'm sure you guys are familiar with 404 404 means uh, not found um, there are 300, which means moved, and 301, you know, the one starting with 300 means they've been moved for different reasons, 400 means there's some kind of error, uh, 500 means some kind of server error. So, uh, and the 200 means everything's working fine, we got what we expect. So if it's anything other than 200, then something went wrong. Maybe there's no internet connection or maybe something like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw an exception. And when throwing an exception, we have the option to pass in a message. So for the message, I'm just going to write uh, server error, but it really could be anything. And then we're going to have to use this data to uh, make such results. So we're going to return a search results. But now we're going to get into a bit of trouble because our data is coming back as JSON and we don't yet have the functions to, uh, to read that JSON, which is what we're going to have to do. So we're going to make a from JSON 